had so much going on in class. And I, oh, hey, uh, my name's Mish. I'm Annie. And welcome to New LLU. You see fall people out there. How's it going? How are we feeling? Yeah, we're so excited to see you all, and we hope you have an amazing weekend, and we're praying that the Lord is directing you in all of your steps, because choosing a college is pretty difficult, right? Okay, but choosing liberty is easy. That's, that's true, that's true. Might be a little biased. It's okay. We have so much going on this weekend, a ton of sports. Mm -hmm. Mish, like, what's going on? Tell me. Okay, so first off, we have D1 hockey today okay. and tomorrow. No way. Mm -hmm. And then I heard that women's lacrosse is playing VCU. Yes. When, when is that? Yes. Is that tomorrow? Mm -hmm. That's Men's crazy. basketball yeah. is also tonight, and women's basketball oh, is tomorrow. You gotta love them. Mm -hmm. They're so awesome. That's what I'm saying. What about track, track and field? field? You know, you know what I'm saying? When I'm do running. You run? When do you run? Uh, I'll run tonight and tomorrow. How so, are you feeling? Be there. I'm feeling, feeling pumped up. I'm feeling pumped good, up. You know? She's going for gold. Gonna be a little fast, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Um, if you want more information though, I heard yeah. you can get tickets, times, locations on the Liberty Flames website. So do not yeah. forget, do not miss it. Yeah, I'm gonna go there right now actually. Oh, okay, bet. Yeah. So I heard that there's a special Soul Train event party thing going on, right? Okay. For like CFA and other students. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be huge. Like, it's really celebrating the African American culture. Um, a lot of sculptures, paintings, music, dancing. Like, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. Okay, I heard that it's Friday night, 9 p.m. in the La Jolla event space. Yes, yes. Okay, oh gosh, I'm, ready. Go. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Over 8 million Ukrainians have left Ukraine as refugees and they need food assistance. On March 3rd, come volunteer and pack meals for the people of Ukraine. Text meal packing to 839-858 to register. And if you like $10,000 and competitions, this is for you. The School of Engineering and Business is hosting the Create Fest on March 31st. The registration deadline is March 1st. Hey, did you hear what's happening tonight? What's happening? It's a late night worship night happening in the School of Music Concert Hall. What time? 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? 10 p.m. All right. 10 Sounds good. Let's yeah. go. Gosh, guys, there's literally nothing in the fridge. You need to restock. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That reminds me. Seniors, the commencement RSVP deadline is March 23rd. That's true. And that also reminds me, baseball and softball season. It's here. Oh, they're starting soon. They're starting soon. Oh. There's so much to remember, so yeah. that's all that's new for now. Yeah, well, enjoy your day at LU. Have a good one. God has called you to be extraordinary. Good morning, Liberty University. Let's get ready to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who never goes back on his word. Amen. He's consistent. Let's worship him. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing. And let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. And let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. And let it rise.
When I was an orphan, now I sit at the table of the king. I was in darkness, now the light of the world has rescued me. So now and forever, I worship the God who set me free. You're changing everything, that's right. Oh, you're changing everything. We say, I was an orphan. Sit at the table of the king I was in darkness Now the light of the world has rescued me And now and forever I worship the God who set me free You're changing everything Oh, you're changing everything Oh, you're changing everything Cause you're changing everything Sing this together. Sing, Jesus, I sit up in all. In Jesus, I Everybody say, Jesus, I said of it all. And Jesus, I said of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you. And nothing else matters And nothing in this world will do yeah. And Jesus, you're the center And everything revolves around you Jesus, you Sing this, Jesus. And Jesus be the center of my life. Oh. And Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning, beginning to the end. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Sing, Jesus. And nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Nothing in this world will do. Only Jesus, only Jesus. And Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus, you have the 
So this trip specifically uh, caught my attention because it's working with Ukrainian refugees as well as the Romanian staff members who are front lines with such a horrible war that's going on. It's an area where uh, there's a lot of need. Uh, there's certainly people who have been displaced through war 
and this was a chance for students to serve in a real way and see real world problems like that. The students oftentimes would prepare meals or help to prepare meals. The food that we would pack, they showed us specifically, this is the areas of Ukraine where this food is being dispersed to. We, we really focused on the spiritual needs of the people and also the physical material needs that the people so desperately needed. And whether that would be serving them meals or just sitting down praying and encouraging them. I really loved the relational experiences that we got. This, this missionary kid, specifically Kyler, and I'm sure many others there, would um, kind of feel almost forgotten about at times. And so being able to hang out with him and play some soccer with him, that was really beautiful to see just him having a good time, him feeling loved and poured into and valued like, like he hadn't been in a while. The biggest way that I saw God work in the little things was just through the volunteers and the staff at the refugee camp. We got to go outside of Bucharest about two hours and we went to a Romanian camp that was for the Ukrainian refugees and we got to um, set up a few of the rooms and do some cleaning projects. The leader of the camp, uh, he had all kinds of tasks for us to do. His name was Medion and uh, he needed a lot of help in a lot of different areas of the camp and he didn't think we could get it all done in a day. We got there early and we got to work and we actually got, got the work done, all of it done early. You know, these people are going through something very real and they need the love of Christ. They need to know that He is our true refuge. Well, it was great to hear from some of the students who earlier this semester had the opportunity of traveling there to Romania, working with one of our missionaries there, Dwight Pogamiller, ministering to those. And, and so we've got those students that are here that went along. Why don't you guys all stand, if you would. Let's appreciate the work that they did as they went to minister there. Now, while I recognize that not all of the students here could have gone along on that trip, you do all have the opportunity of making an impact, making a difference for those in Ukraine that are in the midst of this war. This is the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and so, you know, obviously we continue to pray for them and all that they're going through. But next Friday afternoon, we have the opportunity of packing 270,000 meals that Liberty is going to send over, uh, deliver directly to the people of Ukraine, and we're going to be doing that next Friday from 1.30 until about 7 or 8 o'clock that night, and we need about 800 of students that are here today to sign up for a two-hour block to be able to go in and to pack those meals to get them ready for shipping so that they'll be able to deliver, uh, be delivered to the, the people of Ukraine. And so the information's on the screen here. You can text meal packing to 839 858 or scan the QR code, and you're signing up for a two hour block next Friday afternoon after 1.30 to go in and to help pack those meals. And we're going to be talking about that in convo next Friday with our guests. And so we want to make sure that you have the opportunity of being a part of that. So make sure you sign up for that two hour block. Now, obviously, uh, this is College for Weekend. And so, where are all our College for Weekenders here today? Let me hear you. Come on. It, there you go. Yeah. So it's great to have all of you here. We're thrilled to have you here this weekend. We've got all of those guests. We've got a lot of parents here. We have 1,400 College for a Weekenders here along with all of parents that came along with them. A total of about 3,000 people that are in town this weekend for College for a Weekend, which basically means this. Wards Road is to be avoided at all costs over the next 36 hours. But we've got a lot of great things happening this weekend. We also have some other guests here. And so I want to introduce, uh, uh, where's Jason Bohm? I know he's here right here. He's the Inspector General of the United States Marine Corps speaking here to our, our School of Government. Thank you, sir, for your service and all that you do for our nation. We also have retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, who's over here. If you would, sir, stand. Former member of Congress as well. Thank you for your service to, uh, to our nation. And uh, we also have this uh, group on campus that seems to get like a lot of attention like during the year. And that's our hockey team here at Liberty. All the hockey team, you guys stand up if you would. Hockey team, go ahead. Awesome. Now, I had them stand up because tonight they've got a game at 10, uh, 10 o'clock tonight. 
uh, after the basketball game, which is at 7 o'clock just next door. You want to make sure you come out for that. But 10 o'clock game tonight, 7 o'clock game tomorrow night. And so let's go out and support our hockey team. Now, obviously, you guys know over the last month or so, we have been praying a lot for one of the members of the hockey team, Josh Fricks, who was involved in, in that situation during the game a few uh, weeks back. And, man, we prayed that God would do something miraculous in his life. And so, you know, in introducing the hockey team, it would be a great opportunity for me to give an update on how Josh is doing. But rather than do that, I think it would probably be better if why don't we let Josh give us an update on how Josh is doing. Let's welcome Josh Fricks. Now, Josh, we've been praying a lot for you over this last month, and I remember in those first hours after the accident, we didn't know if you'd ever walk again, and you were telling me this morning, even the doctors that you have been interacting with over these last few weeks told you that they didn't think there would ever be a lot of hope in mobility and things like that. So talk just a little bit about how things have been going. Um, yeah, I mean, at the start, it was uh, no movement. We didn't really know uh, what would come back. Uh, the surgery was... It's always scary getting surgery on your spinal cord, uh, removing uh, vertebrae and, and that such, but the doctor said at the time they, when it broke, it just flicked my spinal cord and came back. And uh, so we're like, okay, so we got pretty lucky because I started moving a couple days after I could get movement back really slowly. And then uh, it wasn't until I got to my rehab center where I had the meeting with the doctor and we saw all the scans. And he, he told us, he looked at me and said, you are a miracle. And, and uh, he said, you put this in a room with 100 doctors, 75% say that you'll never, you'll never walk again from your neck down. You might move your fingers, but that's it. Um, and uh, every day I just, I, uh, I, uh, I see your guys' prayers being answered. I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I can move my arm more. And I, I just sit there alone moving it, just so happy I can move. And it's, it's just amazing to see every day it gets better and better. Well, you know, obviously, we've been praying for you and the students that are in this room and thousands of others across the country, I know, have been praying for you. And, you know, oftentimes we, we go through a crisis like this and we pray that God would show up and do something miraculous. And a lot of times we don't take the opportunity on the back end of actually coming back and having another time of prayer where we simply say, God, thank you. And so, Kirk, uh, Kirk Handy, our hockey coach here, Kirk, man, would you just, let's just give God thanks today, and let's just pray and thank God for what he's done and what he's continuing to do in Josh's life uh, as we see this miracle unfold. Let's pray together. Dear God, we just thank you for this opportunity to be at liberty. Lord, just thank you for training champions for Christ and the opportunity for students to come here and have their lives transformed by being in this place. Lord, may your presence be always present in our lives here. Lord, we just stop and give you thanks, Lord, for what you're doing in Josh's life, Lord, and, and the healing that's taken place there and the continued healing that's going to take place, Lord. Just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the many ways that you have shown uh, us your presence in our lives through this whole situation, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give Josh a big hand. Appreciate you, buddy. We're going to continue to pray for you, buddy. God bless you. And obviously, I mentioned we've got the hockey game tonight, 10 o'clock, and then tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Our basketball game, we're playing Queens College, Queens University tonight, 7 o'clock, right next door. Come out and be a part of that. And also, so I was talking with Richie McGay, our, our head coach of the basketball team a little while ago. We've got another guest with us today, he and his family from the Indiana Pacers, uh, Ryan Carr. Where are you, Ryan? Right over here, Ryan Carr and his family, they're visiting with us. And I, Ryan was here back in the fall, and I told Ryan, Man, it's great that you're here. This part of the scouting team there at the Indiana Pacers, but he wasn't allowed to touch any of our players until after they graduate. Am I right about that? Is that a deal, right? Okay. And his, brought his twin uh, son and daughter here to look at Liberty for College for a weekend, and we just hope to have you come and be a part of our great campus as well. Hey, we've got two great guests with us today. We're excited to have them back here on the campus of Liberty University. Not only uh, you know who they are, but they also, uh, they actually have had children that have attended Liberty. And so they're, they're Liberty parents, so they're part of the family. Let's welcome Willie and Corey Robertson.
Great to have you with us today. Willie, good to see you again. Go ahead and have a seat. Well, obviously, obviously, most of the people in this room, most of the people watching know you guys from a, a TV show that happened to be on, a show called Duck Dynasty. Anybody ever watch Duck Dynasty? I played, uh, I played Willie on that show. Yeah, you did, yeah. And so, you know, obviously, that, but that show is like, it's, it's been off the air for a little while. So just, man, bring us up to speed. What's happening with the Robertson clan uh, in these last few years? You guys have been busy. We have been a little bit busy. So I guess the biggest thing that's happened within our family is that we've become grandparents. I think we have a little picture to show y'all. Do you have a picture? Yes, we have five grandbabies now, and Sadie is pregnant, so we have another one on the way, which is so much fun. Uh, yeah, we have five grandkids. I'm glad you said the number. I, I get a little confused. Um, they're coming quickly. It's like it's a couple a year. Yeah, they're happening fast. So, yeah, lots been uh, lots going on. Still with uh, the company, obviously running the company, and then... Um, I'm writing a book right now uh, about sharing your faith and having conversations uh, and specifically about getting people to Christ. I think the time is right. Uh, I think people are right. I think the world is dark, and I think they're looking for something. So I wanted to put down uh, in book form uh, that, which kind of brings me back to my college days, because writing a book is like just having a uh, something do over and over and over the next day. So I'm feeling you, students, uh, writing so, this book. I to tell the story about him in college. So we were in college together and we took a creative writing class. Well, Willie convinced the professor that he was writing in his own vernacular. So he didn't have to use any proper English, no spelling, no, you know, punctuation, sentence structure. It was his own thing. And she loved it. She bought it hook, line and sinker. She made an A in the class. So it worked out. Just like you. So, uh, there's more than one way to skin a squirrel, so uh, <laughs> it <worked> out. <laughs> and so let's talk about how many ways there are to skin a squirrel. No, no, this, well, <laughs> that's kind of like my mother. They said uh, she was on Wendy Williams' show, and she said, well, how do you cook squirrel? And my mother said, well, is it a young squirrel or an old squirrel? Because there's two different recipes for that, uh, how to cook squirrel. She so. did actually fly that squirrel through TSA to New York <laughs> City to cook it on the show, yes. So another fun thing that we're working on that I'm so excited to talk about today because we have not talked about this live anywhere, so you're all the first to hear about it, but we made a movie about Phil and Kay's life story. Willie mentioned his mom, and their story is just an incredible story of redemption and forgiveness, and so we decided to put that down in movie form, and that'll be out in September. Yeah, we have... Uh... The other thing, we're, we have a movie coming out, which we're going to talk about that more, but we also are producing, helping produce a musical. Uh, so I know when you think of Broadway-style musicals, you think of Willie Robertson. So um, that's what I do when I'm in the deer stand or duck blind. I'm thinking of show tunes. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, but, but we do have this coming out. It's called His Story. It's about uh, Jesus, and it's kind of like Hamilton smashes into the chosen. And, um, but it is launching in May in Dallas, and so we are super excited about that. So any of you uh, guys in Texas are going to visit, come see us uh, at His Story, the musical. Well, you know, obviously, you know, the show ended a while back, but you guys have been obviously very busy, lots of different things, but it's kind of cool just to watch from afar, and, you know, we've had Sadie here, you know, she's come to speak a couple of times and has blessed the students here, but in watching your entire family, like all of them, I mean, across the board, like they're all serving God in unique ways and in different ways and in different stages, and not all in ministry, obviously, but in ways that bring a new perspective to, like, living out your faith where you are. And so, you know, obviously, in those kinds of discussions, those kinds of elements, man, it's got to make you guys proud, uh, and, and certainly your parents proud, to just look at a family that is, like, all very unique, and I think unique is the right word <laughs> to describe you guys, a very unique family that in books and in television shows and in movies and in speaking and all of those kinds of things, like bringing glory and honor to Christ in everything, and it all started with a duck call. I mean, that's a pretty amazing journey. Oh, I heard a duck call. Somebody brought one. I love that you Did said. Did someone you, break a duck call to? Did you bring one with you? A duck commander duck? Get up here. Come here, quick, quick. Run, run, <laughs> run.
All right, over there. Come on. This is my cousin. I told him to wait in the truck, but obviously he didn't. Hey, nice to meet you. hey they're, they're, I'm not touching it. Okay, I'm not touching it. Here, stand right here. Get a picture with Willie and, and Corey Robertson. Somebody get a picture of these guys together. There we go. We gotta hear you blow it now. You wanna chuckle or? No, no. Oh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> that is outstanding. So Good much. job, buddy. Yeah, sure. Why not? We got nothing yeah, else going on Yeah, we got to get the here, selfie so. moment. By the way, blowing that duckle, that's what training a champion for Christ is all about. There. And, yeah, so that's awesome. So, listen, seriously, you know, obviously, man, what an incredible journey. But and you were about to say, like, like it's well, got to make you guys proud. I was thinking about you mentioning Sadie because I love to tell this story. So, Sadie was five years old. We have this video of her when she's five years old. And um, at that time, he was a children's minister at a summer camp. I mean, he was a, he was the, I was a children's minister at our church. He was the manager of a summer camp. And so there was no, like, indication that we were going to be famous someday. And I have this video of Sadie preaching on a coffee table at five years old and she's telling the world she's like or the video camera she's like I don't care if you're a policeman or a jail person God loves you and she's just preaching and then she says and even if I get famous someday I will not think about myself I will remember God and it was just this like we found that video actually after you know, Duck Dynasty was happening it was her like sweet 16 we pulled the video out and we saw that and we were like whoa, God had a plan all along, and we just had to just keep saying yes, keep stepping into what he asked of us. And whenever the show started, I remember we kind of came all together as a family, and that was our prayer. It was just like, God, if this does not bring your glory, then don't let it happen. We're, this is for you, and we know this is for you, and the whole purpose of what we're doing is to just point people to you. So that's what God has just blessed it, and we just keep kind of like taking that next step forward. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think... Um, I think you've got to, I think sometimes we think, especially as young people, is, you know, what does God want for us? And so we're, we've always just been like, wherever we go, we're taking God. We had no idea this was going to happen. Um, in fact, Corey, I was in seminary. That, I was going to be a preacher, and Corey was going to a, co a Christian college school. And so I had to make this choice. I felt like, do I go to this college, which I didn't expect uh, going to? Uh, I made a... Uh, uh, a nine on the ACT, um, True story. which is not good. Uh, I found out. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know that I could have gotten in, so I had to take it again. This is a real success story from nine on the ACT. Yeah, well, how do you like me now? So, um, <laughs> but no, I went, and, and when I, it's when I was in college that I started thinking of other ways, and then I can tell you, I'm so glad it turned out the way it did because I feel like we need more believers and Christians out in the workforce. And not that ministers are bad, that's awesome, but we need more Christian business people. We need more Christian people in entertainment. We need more Christians out there, believers, with that ministry mindset. And not just sitting there saying, hey, we believe in Jesus, but actually having a ministry mindset and bringing that to the workplace. Kind of like Billy Graham said, like the, this movement in the workplace is, is going to happen. And so we've been able to do that, and God's you used us there. So wherever it is that you go, you just take God with you because sometimes you have no idea where you're going to end up uh, in this life. Yeah, we named our, we started a production company a couple of years ago. We named it Tread Lively, and there's a lot of meanings behind that name, but one big part of it is, I don't know if you've ever heard the term tread lightly, and tread lightly means to just be careful, like watch your step, and whenever um, we started, we decided to do the show, we had a lot of like well-meaning Christians come up to us and say, oh, be careful, like you're going to Hollywood, your kids are going to end up on drugs, and you're going to divorce, and you know, this kind of like fear of stepping into something, and we just believe that we're called to an abundant life. We've got the Spirit of God with us, in us, so we carry that wherever we are. So when we walk into a space, whether it's Hollywood or whether it's your work or your dorm or whatever, we don't need to be treading lightly. We need to tread lively. So that was kind of the part of the name of our production company. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, Willie, you alluded to it, and obviously, you know, you talked about Sadie when she was five years old, getting up saying, and even if I become famous one day, I'm not going to compromise. And, you know, I, that, that's when I think of the Robertson family, and I think about all the opportunities and all the things that you guys have been involved in, I think that statement, no compromise, has been part of the, 
you know, kind of the conversation, kind of the picture of everything that you guys have done. So obviously you guys have had incredible success, right? Not only from the one show, but lots of other shows, uh, you know, where you've gotten to step into the Hollywood perspective and you've been on all these different things. And that is the beautiful picture about what you guys have done. There's been incredible success. There's been commercial success, but there's also been no compromise. You know, you've got thousands of young people in this room that one day are going to walk out into lots of different career paths, right? What would you say to them on how to make sure that compromise never becomes part of their journey? Well, you need to go ahead and make your list right now of your priorities because life is going to be constantly about priorities and what we, where we put our priorities. And so uh, for us, we've always tried to live by this motto of faith first, family second, uh, and that my dad says ducks number three, but that can be different uh, if you're not super into ducks uh, like my father and us and my mulleted friend who came up blowing the duck call. Um, <laughs> So whatever that is, and for us that's work or your vocation or whatever it is that you're into stays number three. Because what's going to happen is as life happens, uh, those, those lower priorities will start coming up. And they'll look like they're most important in your life. It's where you're going to put time and, and all that. And they can go up on, you know, above your family and they can go above your faith. And so what we found is that as that trickles down, our faith uh, helped keep this family together, still does, you know, and still as we're attacked and as we screw up, you know, our faith puts that family together. The family can help with all the rest of the things. And so when your family uh, busts up and has problems, I I promise you, you're going to have trouble at work. You're going to have trouble with what it is that you're trying to do. So uh, that's just the the priorities that we went into this show with. But honestly, that's priorities we had years ago and what our what our family has been built on not just ours but Corey's family as well and so we were raised in that in that way to keep those priorities there yeah, and it does it does take intention you know whenever we first started the show I mentioned we kind of all sat down together and I remember we said like we 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 don't want to forget like what is most important and so we were like we need a family we need a motto we need something that we're going to say that's going to remind us and I remember Sa was there and y'all know Uncle Sa and yeah there you go and Sa says, remember the Alamo. And we're like, what does that have to do with anything? But we're like, that's it. Okay, so that's our saying. So we all got refrigerator magnets, and we put our refrigerator, and it said, remember the Alamo. And it was just a reminder to us to remember what was most important. And we do need those reminders. As you look in Scripture, the Israelites over and over again forgot, like forgot what God had done for them and forgot what God had done. They needed those reminders. And so as a family, we put that in place for us as a reminder to, to say like, oh, let's not forget what is important. Let's always go back to that. You know, obviously with, with that picture of what we've seen, you know, we saw Sadie and Dancing with the Stars. And, you know, I remember there was some controversy about that where, you know, where she was standing up for her faith. And there was some pushback from, you know, the Hollywood perspective of why was this, why would they let her on this show? And now you've also had the opportunity of stepping into some, uh, some interesting type of musical show because you were a guest on a show called The Masked Singer. Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think we've got a picture. I think we've got a photo here, maybe. Where is that picture? There it is. So talk a little bit about that, Willie. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, <laughs> so that was the hardest thing I believe I've ever done. Uh, that's, it's, by the way, the show is legit and real. You do have to sing uh, with this mask on. I was nine foot, six inches tall uh, with, the, with the mask on. So uh, when I first met with them, they said, um, uh, look, when you come out to Hollywood, uh, you can be whatever you want. You can be whatever personality you want. You can change your voice. You know, just have fun with it because you're going to have a mask on. No one's going to know who you are. So I was thinking of like, what, what do I want to be and, and what would that look like? And they said, but we have a costume picked out we hope you love. And, and I was like, what is it? And they were like, it's a duck. And I'm like, well, well, that's exactly what I do all the time. So it, that's kind of on the nose. And uh, they were excited. They did change my name. So originally I started out Duck, and that's what they call you. Every time they see you, they call you Duck. They do not refer to you as your real name. Somewhere along the line, they changed it to Mallard. And they were like, we think we're going to call you Mallard. And I was like, well, that's cool, but the costume is a wood duck. It's not a Mallard duck. Now, the group from Los Angeles I was meeting with said, there's a difference in ducks? And I said, well, yeah, there's different types of ducks, you know. And, and they said, well, we don't think anyone will notice. And I said, I don't know. And so, 
So the first night the show was out, I called my mom and dad, and uh, they knew I'd told them I was going to be on the show, and they were like, oh, you did so good, and and mom said, but your dad wanted me to let you know, you realize you're a wood duck, uh, not a mouse. I said, I know, mom, they don't understand the difference in Los Angeles. You know, uh, your, other, your son, John Luke, was here for a while at school, graduated here at Liberty, found his wife here at Liberty as well. And I, I remember watching John Luke during that time when he was here. You know, he was very active in church. He was very active in serving. And even though he was coming, and this was like right in the, the heyday of Duck Dynasty, like right at the height when it just started to, you know, the meteoric rise. But it was just interesting, you know, kind of watching him. And here's a guy who had every opportunity to be somebody and every opportunity to, you know, to flaunt the fact that he was, you know, from this famous family. But yet, man, he, every day, just faithfulness, living out his faith, living it out the right way, doing it with humility. I mean, that's got to, as a mom and dad, I mean, you've got to be proud of the way you see your kids now doing the same thing and living that out. Well, thank you. It is. That is the greatest reward to see our kids grow up and, and love Jesus. And yeah, while they were here, John Lee got to work on the, he was a host for the convocation committee, which was so fun and so special. He got to meet just amazing people and, and serve in that way. And also he got to eat all the food. That was a part of it. I don't know if you know, but he was early married and they didn't have a lot of money. So like he was part of it, you know, he got to just eat all the food in the back room at convocation every time. He would, he would like load up and take it back to his house and he and Mary Kate would, you know, <laughs> enjoy. And it was a lot of a different food than what he's probably used to back, uh, back in Louisiana, probably, I'm sure. Probably. So. Well, you know, so obviously, like, what's next? I mean, you've got the movie coming out, a production company that uh, you've talked about a couple of times here. And, you know, obviously, like, man, the journey that's ahead, in your minds, it has to be, like, exciting of, like, there's better things ahead than there are even in the past. So let's talk about this movie you have coming out. Again, talk about faith. Talk about your family. Let's tell us about the movie. So... Um, we decided to, we started this production company and we do podcasting and we do unscripted TV and that's kind of some of the things we knew, but doing a film is brand new to us. And so we kind of, you know, thought about like, what story do we want to tell first? And we decided to tell the story of Phil and Kay's life, because if you know much about Phil and Kay's life, um, they had some really hard years. It didn't, it wasn't just this kind of upward trajectory all the way to Duck Dynasty success and fame. And like everybody's life has all kinds of elements in it. And so we decided to tell that story. And a big part of, um, you know, while we are who we are and believe in Jesus and have stayed true to that is because of their story and because we, you know, stand on the backs of their story, of their story of faith and the legacy that they've passed on to us. There's an episode of Duck Dynasty that um, was the biggest, it's still rated, I think, the most watched episode of all time. And it was an episode where Phil and Kay renewed their vows. And it was such a powerful moment for us as a family because we knew that had that not happened, had they not stayed together as a couple, had they not Phil not repented whenever he needed to and Kay not forgiven him whenever she needed to, that we wouldn't be there right then. And none of the success that we'd experienced, we probably wouldn't have even met, um, or none of the success that we experienced would have happened had they had a t two people not decided to choose what was right, turn their lives to Jesus, and it changed everything. Yeah, I mean, we, we look at this movie... Um probably as a tool that can, where people can share their faith and just as an extension of mom and dad even sharing their faith because uh, it is, an, it's so important as I'm writing this book, I, I began by just, uh, it's kind of like a, a 23 and me spiritual, you know, like genealogy, because if you think about it, uh, if those moments don't happen, you know, and there's people in the movie, uh, there's, a, there's a preacher from Louisiana who gets in his car and drives to a bar in Arkansas to share his faith with my dad. And that's really amazing because what preachers would get in, you know, drive across state lines, go into a bar. and Usually uh, preachers that go across state lines and go into a bar are not going there to share their exactly. faith. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And this guy is, is saying, yeah, sure, I'll go in there. And he, he shared with me the story this, this pastor did. And he said, I walked in, your dad had a pistol in his belt and a big Budweiser. <laughs> and the preacher walked in the bar and he goes, what you selling, preacher? And, uh, and I was thinking about how intimidating that was and how he still got the gospel to my father and, um, and dad uh, uh, dad's sister was the one who talked this pastor into going up there. And so we tell this story about how all this happens. And Corey's right. If none of that happens, 
I grew up in a completely different family, single parent family. Uh, we would have been with mom, all these boys, and who knows what would have happened. I know I wouldn't be standing here right now and, and all the uh, success. But if you look at the spiritual impact of that with the hundreds of millions of people all over the world who watched Duck Dynasty that ended in a prayer, prayers went into living rooms of people that had no idea what prayer even is. And so they were exposed to the gospel all over. Look at the followers that we have now on social media and say, and our kids, and I mean, you can, I can bring it all the way back down to a bar in Junction City, Arkansas, a little couple that no one would have ever dreamed. And so that just, for me, it continued to inspire me to share my faith because we never know who those people are. There's probably people in here right now that you're thinking about going, there's no way, there's no way God could do something with this guy or with this girl uh, or with some of your parents or uncles or aunts or whoever that is or friends. But I'm telling you, uh, we lived it and saw it and then saw how God just turned that into something we could never have imagined. And, and that's the movie, and that's what, we, that's what we put together. You think about that moment when, you know, that preacher walked in, had a conversation with your dad. Your dad obviously looked at him with skepticism, cynicism, all those kinds of things. But, you know, there was a point of decision. There was a point of, uh, of change that took place in your dad's life that, as you said, like changed the trajectory of everything for his family from then on and even still today. Like, man, what, what a beautiful picture of the importance of every day and of this day of making right choices today because the choices we make now could impact our families generations from now. I mean, like, is that something that, that you continue to talk about with your, your kids? And, you know, I have grandkids coming now. And, I mean, how important, like, every single day making the right choice, right decisions? Oh, for sure. Well, the one thing I want them to see is the authenticity of I want them to see me living it out. And I don't want them to see me one way at the church building and then something completely different uh, the rest of the week. So I want them to see that and say, man, you know, dad or grandpa uh, is like that all the time. And it is those things. Uh, I baptized a guy a couple of months ago and I said, hey, man, this this may be for your kids. And he said, I don't have kids, Willie. And I said, but you may. <laughs> and, and now you're going to be a better person that they're going to see something different than they saw in what you were before. So, yeah, it just keeps resonating to keep getting the message out. Because I don't know who those people are that's going to be like, this is going to I know it will change. You know, here's the deal. If we wouldn't have become famous, if it would have just impacted mom and dad and all of the boys there in Arkansas, it would have been completely worth it. It's not that we something had to happen there. I mean, it would have it changed our lives drastically. But then it was amazing to see what God was like. Okay, you take this step. I've got so much more uh, planned for you. Yeah, I was thinking about our families were very different growing up, and um, but I grew up in a family that was a family of faith from the time I was born. And um, there's so much beauty in that, and there's so much power in that. Willie came from another experience where his dad turned to Christ. He was three, so he doesn't remember a lot of, of that before, but his older brothers really do. But I know they talk a lot about them seeing their dad do just like a whole 180 and how that impacted their life. He went from like just all out. You know, Phil's a kind of an all out person, if you, if you know, know him. He, he goes all out, so just all out in the world. And everything that, that you can imagine, alcoholism and abuse and adultery and all that, to just turning, total turn to being a father and a husband and to providing for his family in a whole different way. So they got to see that so powerfully. So I think that's one thing that it's taught us is that, yeah, just don't ever give up hope on anyone. Like I know a lot of people like to say, oh, people don't change. People don't change. But with Jesus, people do change, and they can change, and they can change in powerful ways. So obviously, like, that that was the natural choice for the first movie to tell that story because, man, we all need to hear that story. And I think you've got a clip uh, from some behind-the-scenes. Yes. Of the, let's show that. Let's do it.
And obviously, with that film, you know, the hope and the prayer, I'm sure, for your family is just simply this, is that will be less about, you know, Phil Robertson and less about Duck Dynasty and more about Christ to point people to that truth. And so, man, we just appreciate all that you and your family continued, no compromise, standing for Christ. What, what would you say to these students, like in today? Like we're, you know, obviously in a society, in a culture where everything is pressing against living out your faith. What would you say, like, if you could give just a one sentence or a one paragraph encouragement for these students, like, how to live out their faith, how to make the right decisions today, what would you say? Well, I would say, you know, get on mission. And, I mean, for me, that's sharing the good news of Jesus with other people. And so I think if the, the more that we think about how we can get that out, it'll help keep your life in line as well. And people will look to you and bring people to you. And so uh, that's what I like to think about because it's always continual. You know, when uh, we were fishermen growing up, and so I could really resonate with uh, Peter's story. And so, because he was a fisherman and Jesus said, now let's go catch other people. And so, and that was a lifetime of doing that. And and then sometimes you may need to make a change like we see in Phil's life. That's Acts chapter 9, the apostle, there's Saul, uh, who gets converted and changes like that. And so we saw that as well as what Corey was saying when, when he changed his life like that. And so there may be people in here, I'm sure there are, uh, people in here right now who may need to really make that change. And, and don't go through all the mess that dad, where you're on the verge of losing everything, your family, your kids, your job, all of that. Uh, make that change before. Yeah, and I would just say, um, just put your faith in Christ. I think that it's, um, right now, there's a lot of anxiety. You hear about young people experience so much anxiety. And I heard this term, purpose anxiety, even like fear about like, what's my purpose? What my, what's my calling? And, and this world is scary right now. There's, there's a lot of scary things happening. But, you know, whenever you just put your trust in Jesus and know that he is with you, he is in you, he goes before you, it just kind of eases all that. It's not about it's not about you and what you have to do. And it's not about doing the next right thing and making sure you have it all perfect. It's about just saying like, God, I trust you. I give you my life. I'm going to follow you and um, and letting him do what he his will in your life. You know, you talked about the end of the show always ended with prayer, right? So, you know, we're coming to the end of this time together. And it'd be great to end this in prayer. And so, Corey, I'm going to ask you if you would. Well, first of all, let's, we're going to take a walk. And we're going to go over to the other side over here, the people that have been watching screens. And, Corey, I'm just going to ask if you would, would you just pray over the students that are here? Again, you know, 15,000 students on our campus. The potential is amazing of what God can do and what God will do through each and every one of them sold out for him. Would you just pray over our students today as we come to a close? I love that. All right, let's pray. Father, we just um, thank you for this time together. We thank you for this space that we can just worship you and we could just um, just come before you. And um, we thank you for just that access to you, Father. You're the creator of the universe. You just have it everything in your hand, Father. We can just lay it all at your feet. We thank you for that, Father. I just pray for each student in this room that you would um, just fill them with the courage and the um, confidence that comes only through you, Father. We know that the courage and confidence does not come within us. It's not of this world, Father. It is of you. And we can walk boldly in this world. We can walk, we can tread lively in this world. We can walk with abundance in this world because of you, because we have your spirit in us, Father. We just pray for what you're doing in our world, in our country right now. We pray for the revival that we're seeing. We pray that the young people, I'm just so grateful for young people who just love you and follow you and we know that there's we have so much to learn from this next generation father and i just pray that um you would just give them that boldness and confidence to step into what they know that you have for them father i just um ask protection and peace for all the parents that are here i pray that you just give them a a sense of peace that um is supernatural for their children that um that you're with them that you were holding them up, Father. I just thank you for what you're doing in our life. I thank you for what you're doing on this campus. I thank you for um, just young people that love you, and I'm just grateful for your son, Jesus, Father. I pray that um, we would just, just not lose sight of the great sacrifice that he did for us, Father, that we would just keep that at the forefront of our minds, Father, that the sacrifice that he did, he loved us so much to come to earth to die for us and he's raised again for us and we thank you for that um 
We're just forever grateful, and it's in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, can we give Willie and Corey Robertson a big thank you today for being here? Now, hey, before we go, before we go, do we have any students here that are, are attending here from either Monroe or West Monroe, Louisiana? Do we have any at all? Seriously, we have one. We and have just wait, one. He's wearing camo, so well, he's representing. I love tell, it. Tell sign. Any others? You you are? Well, stand up. Okay. If you are if you're from Monroe or West Monroe, I want you to come up here really quick. We're going to get a family photo. Okay. Come on down. Go go that way. Any our others? Son, our son Will and his fiance Abby are here. Where are y'all? Come up here. Family photo time. Where are you from? I'm from Oak Grove. Though. Oak Grove, that counts. Oak Grove counts. He's from Oak Grove, and Willie says that counts. So we got it. All right, there we go. Hello. Uh, I'm from like uh, Minden near there, like West yeah. Minden, close yeah. enough. Okay, any others? Come on up. Any others? Now, this is part of your family, right? So, Will, wave, Will. Now, and now he's, a, he's, we all know him because he was here at Liberty, right. right there. So. And his now fiance, Abby. Awesome. So we're adding another one to the family this year. And friends, where are you from? Um, I live from Ruston. Ruston yes. counts. We're from Pineville, but. <laughs> is Baton Rouge too far? Oh, hey, you're right. in, you're so in. So turn around, let's get a picture together. Let me get the mics here. Here we go. All right, let's get the picture. All right, we got it? All right, great, 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 great. Okay. Hey, guys, students, don't forget. Tonight, basketball game, 7 o'clock. Hockey game, 10 o'clock. 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Hockey game. God bless you. Have a great weekend.